I just got back from the pool. I laid out and tried to get a little bit of a tan. Dylan and I are going to the East Coast in a couple days to visit his family. Rocky, not right now, please. I love you, but please. He squeaks that candy corn all day long. And I love him so much, but it's sometimes just the most annoying sound. Rocky, please, not right now. I forget what I was saying. Oh, we're going to the East Coast in a couple days. I'm trying to get a little bit of a base tan because we're gonna be at the beach house all week. I'm super excited. I will talk more about that in another video, but this is just gonna be a sit down video. We're gonna have girl talk. No boys allowed. I haven't actually even really looked at the questions that were sent to me, so this will be exciting for all of us. No, I know, Rocky. Do you need to take a nap in your crate? Or can you sit there quietly? Okay, starting off strong. How to know the guy is worth the effort. You know the saying, a phone works both ways. So if you're mad at someone that they're not calling or texting you, but if you're not calling or texting them, then why should you expect them to call and text you? I think that can also apply to like dating specifically. If you put out effort and then he reciprocates, then that's how you know he's worth the effort. If he's putting out effort first, even better. If he treats you well, if he's kind to you, if he makes you feel good, you feel good when you're around him, you won't know until you try. Put in effort, and then if he reciprocates it, then you know that he's worth it. Obviously, that can be short-lived depending on how the rest of the relationship goes. What do you think about friendships nowadays? Because I got no friends, only two to hang. I think quality over quantity, whether that's one friend, five friends, eight friends, however many friends you have. If you are surrounded by good people, quality people, quality friends, it doesn't matter. That's like better. You know, I honestly think that having a smaller circle is better because how could you really be that close with 20 people or how could you really be good friends with 20 people or however many. I have a very small circle of friends, but I know that they are my friends. I know that they will have my back. I know that I could talk to them about anything. I know that they'll be there for me. And I would rather have that. Rocky, ah! I would rather have that than 20 friends and I can't call one of them and none of them will be there for me. That's what I think about friendships. I think it's all about having meaningful ones. And at the end of the day, Rocky, he's drinking my coffee now. I'm sorry if you hear him squeaking. How do you deal with overthinking and anxiety? If you guys know me, you know that I have very bad anxiety. I have been dealing with anxiety for a very long time and I go to therapy for my anxiety. Therapy has helped me a ton, just point blank going to therapy, talking over my thoughts with someone who is completely objective to what I'm saying an objective listener, no bias, that sort of thing. But obviously not everyone has the option to go to therapy and or some people go to therapy and they don't like their therapist. I know it can be hard to find one, so. Therapy aside, writing is a great outlet for me to express myself. So if I'm having a moment, I will write down how I'm feeling and that helps me almost really think about how I'm feeling versus just feeling how I'm feeling because sometimes if I'm like in the middle of kind of a panic or a freak out and I write it down, then it's like, okay, wait, is this really worth freaking out about? And I can actually like digest my thoughts versus just like feeling them. I would also say be aware of what makes you anxious and be aware of the times where you're triggered or you feel like you need to overthink or what you're overthinking about because more often than not, there will be a pattern. I have very specific triggers. I know what triggers me. It took me a while to realize that there was a pattern of what makes me anxious and what makes me overthink or feel unsafe. But now that I know or have a pretty good idea of the things that make me feel anxious or unsafe, I'm able to avoid them so that it doesn't happen as often. For example, being around people who are really drunk or in an environment where it's very loud, lots of people, large crowds, I don't do well with that. That's a situation that makes me anxious. That's kind of a broad, or not broad, but without getting too personal and too deep of what makes me anxious, that is a situation that now I know I should probably just avoid that because if it makes me feel unsafe and uncomfortable, I just shouldn't do it. So 
Tips for not being anxious? Find out what makes you anxious. Moving on. What do you truly think about a guy having girlfriends while in a relationship? Every relationship is obviously different and everyone has different opinions on this. So I am just going to share my opinion and please don't come at me for it or do, but it's still my opinion. I think there is a healthy way to have friends that are the opposite sex. I have guy friends. Dylan has girlfriends, but am I texting my guy friends all the time? Am I going out one-on-one -on -one with them? Am I riding around in the car with them? Am I staying out late with them? No, you have to establish boundaries and that is different for everyone because some people are okay with certain things and some people are not and I feel like Dylan and I have a pretty good understanding of what's okay and what's not. Also pretty much all of my friends who are guys, I don't know why I did air quotes, they are guys, <laughs> but Dylan has become friends with them as well and he has his own relationship with them so it's not like anything weird where I'm like storing away my secret guy friends. I would consider Dylan friends with my friends who are girls but is he texting them and hanging out with them? No. So I don't know what else to say about it. Hopefully that kind of answers your question. I heard someone say on TikTok the other day and I thought it was amazing and I had never heard it put this way before. This guy was talking, trying to give advice to guys or boyfriends or whatever. And he said, you should try to be making other girls jealous of your girlfriend because of how much you love her and how much attention you give her. You should not be trying to make your girlfriend jealous because of the attention you're giving to other girls. And I thought that that was a really great way of putting that because I think that it is so sick and twisted when a boyfriend is giving other girls attention and it makes his girlfriend uncomfortable or upset. Like, why would you want that? Basically, I think that there's healthy ways to go about a friendship with the opposite sex. How do you cope when Dylan goes out without you? Unfortunately, this was kind of a boundary that was more of a lesson learned. The baseline of it is you should trust your partner to go out without you and you should have those types of conversations where he knows what you're comfortable with, okay with, you know what he's comfortable or okay with. I kind of have mixed feelings about it because there's obviously a time and place or a situation where he would need to or have the opportunity to go out without me and he would go and it's fine. But I kind of feel like as a, the last time Dylan went out without me, he was supposed to be going out with his office and people from his office but the only people that actually went out were him and this other girl from the office and that is where i drew my boundary i said that cannot happen again i'm not comfortable with that that to me is inappropriate i wouldn't go out with another guy like out to a bar without you like so that was where i drew my that can't happen like it's his job as my partner to respect my boundary and I don't feel like that was a really crazy request. I think that you and your partner just need to have a talk of what's okay and what's not, what's cool with you, what's not. Communication is the key and I will leave it at that. My camera's about to die. My birth control experience, if you've ever taken or, or, or are on birth control. I have never had a bad birth control experience, I don't think. I was on the pill for a while, ever since I was 17 up until two years ago, I think. Okay, we're back. I'm probably gonna have to charge this again in a couple minutes, but we're gonna see how far we can go or how much I can do, I should say. I think I left off on the birth control question. I have an IUD now. I have the Kyla or Kylina. Kylina, I think it's called. During my PMS time, my cramps are worse with the IUD, but I lost like 10 pounds after I got off the pill, which isn't that significant and other factors also play into it. When I was in college, I was on the pill, I was drinking more, wasn't exercising literally at all. So I just had a lot of water weight and some just a little puffy, nothing crazy. But at the time I didn't notice, but looking back, I can kind of tell. But, and now I don't really drink 
as much at all and I exercise regularly so I just feel better in general but yeah I've had no bad experiences with the pill or with the IUD but it's all about what works for your body I'm not a doctor so you know what works for me might not work for you so I would definitely talk to your doctor about what would work for you how do you know when you're dealing with a fake friend your friends should be proud of you they should be happy for you they should want the best for you a fake friend will be jealous of you they will talk behind your back they will not invite you to things i have had friends who i thought were my best friends or good friends and looking back they would leave me out wouldn't invite me to stuff i would tell them exciting news and they would come back with cool you know like you can just tell when someone's not happy for you or whatever if you leave hanging out with them and you have an anxious stomach you don't really feel good about your hangout or they didn't make you feel good about yourself that's how you know you're not dealing with a very good friend how did you know he is the one when should you know by did you always know it would be dylan i can pull up text messages from the early days of texting my friends when me and dylan first started dating and i would say i am going to marry him i want to marry him i think within the first six months especially a guy i think a guy knows early on whether he sees that in the future or not I think that six months is like a good gauge of when the honeymoon phase starts to fade out and you start to really connect with the person as your true self. I think two years, that mark is also a big indicator of the longevity of your relationship and how that's gonna look. I would say pretty early on you should have an idea. And I know that a lot of people would disagree. I'm not saying you have to get married really early on, obviously, but I think you should know whether the person is marriage material for you. How to move on from someone you thought was the one. I think that when you're with someone for a certain amount of time, or maybe time isn't even a factor, when you've shared this sort of really deep emotional connection with someone, you obviously are probably thinking that they're the one, and sometimes that's just not the reality. Every situation is different, but a quote that I heard that I really liked was, you will never lose what's truly meant to be yours, or you'll never lose what's really meant for you. And while it's easier said than done i think that whatever you're going through if it's a really bad breakup with someone you thought was the one in a year or two just as you learn to love and grow by yourself for yourself you'll realize that everything happens for a reason that guy or girl wasn't meant for you and it gives you the opportunity to meet the person who is the one sometimes a door closes so another one can open sometimes things end so that you can actually receive what's meant for you Oh, my camera died and I plugged it in and then I fell asleep. So yeah, I just took like a 30 minute nap. I got a lot of questions about hair and being hairless, hairlessness, hair removal, men's razors. I prefer for several reasons. The main reason being men's razors are typically meant to shave a man's face. Therefore, I just feel like the glide is a little bit more gentle, a little more smooth. That's just how I feel about it. Also a good shaving cream. I used a shaving cream and a scrub that was by EOS or EOS. Really liked that. Exfoliating before you shave. Now the question, this one is like about the stand standards of women and being expected to be hairless all the time. I don't know who is expecting anyone to be hairless all the time. I get maybe if you're going to the beach, you don't want to have a bush coming out of your bikini. <laughs> like, that was gross. I don't know if I'm going to include that in this video, but like, I can't believe I just said that. I've never really said that before. I don't think anyone is expecting anyone to be hairless all the time. I shave and do that sort of stuff probably once a week. So between the time I shave and the next time I shave, obviously my hair goes back. I'm actually at that point right now. I don't know if you can see. I think I'm gonna shave tomorrow. That's my shaving day. Like we're all old enough. We all know that we have hair. Hair is hair and you can choose to groom and maintain that however you want. 
Do not think that you need to be a Polly Pocket out here on the street. How do you deal with separation anxiety from your significant other, thinking that your significant other might cheat just because you've been cheated on before and now it's a fear, and comparing yourself to other girls? Comparison is the thief of joy. Do not compare yourself. Your looks, your job, your personality, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your pant size, your house, whatever it is, don't compare yourself. Focus on yourself. Everyone has skeletons in their closet. Everyone is going through something. Don't be jealous or think that you need to be someone else or anything like that. I know that it's hard sometimes. You look at someone on Instagram and you think, wow, they have a really nice butt. How do I get that butt? You think that their waist is this small. You think, wow, how is their waist this small? You never know what's going on in someone's life. Focus on yourself, focus on bettering yourself because the girl that you're looking at and you're trying to be like her, she's probably looking at someone else and trying to be like someone else. And if we're all just trying to be like each other, no one is actually being themselves. The grass is greener where you water it. Water your own lawn. Now answering the question about kind of having trust issues with your partner, you might think that they might cheat on you type of thing. I have dealt with that in my current relationship with Dylan because my past partner was not a trustworthy person. He did things that made me have a lot of issues, <laughs> to be frank. What I have learned though, after being with Dylan for these past few years, my personal past and my personal trust issues don't have to do with Dylan. And it is so unfair to carry or to put on your partner what is not their fault. Whatever you're dealing with, that's yours to deal with. And I think it's a great idea to be upfront and communicate the issues that you may be having, but you need to really make it clear to them that it's not their fault, it's not their problem, and it's not their job to fix it. You really have to do that work for yourself. And that's a really sticky game because it's easy to take things out on another person. It's easy to lash out or, you know, like be triggered. He does something and then you're mad at him and he doesn't even know why you're mad and he didn't do anything wrong, but you're mad because of something that happened five years ago with someone else. Yada, yada, yada. You really have to kind of compartmentalize your relationship now with your relationship in the past and those are two separate people's, two separate relationships, two separate experiences. And it is a problem and it sucks when you have to go through things that are also not your fault. You know, someone cheating on you, someone being unfaithful to you, that's not your fault, obviously. But unfortunately, it is your job to fix how you heal from it. So yeah, that's that part of that question. And then another part of the question was, Separation anxiety? I think separation anxiety is different than not trusting your partner. So that's kind of like those can be exclusive, you know? Are you having separation anxiety because you miss them? Or are you having separation anxiety because you literally don't trust them to be without you and you feel like you need to watch them every five seconds? That's something that you should think about. But okay, anyway, my camera's about to die. That answers almost all the questions I got, kind of. But also this video is gonna be way too long if I answer all of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if I should do more of these. I love you guys. I hope you have a great day, a great weekend, a great life, and leave a comment, leave a like or subscribe or whatever, and love you, bye.